Good morning, everyone, and welcome. My name is Terry Jarosa, and I am from City, but here representing the ABSL Management Board, uh, where I coordinate our efforts in the HR and talent space. So welcome to this lovely room, and I wanted to congratulate you all on two things. First of all, for those of you who have made it here to start at 9.30, well done. I understand that there was much celebration last night until, or I guess until the wee hours of this morning. But second, as we heard yesterday, talent seems to be the key topic. So I think you all must be the smartest people at the conference. So well done for joining this breakout group. Good morning and welcome to our stream. My name is Marcelina Godlewska. I'm heading the operations in ABSL. So I'm a co-lead of breakout stream with Terry Jaroza. So today we are gonna approach, I would say quite good topics related to mega trends. So with a totally fresh, fresh, fresh approach. So hopefully you will enjoy it. Welcome. Okay, and with that, we're going to get right to our first presenter, right into the topics, and I'd like to welcome to the stage Mr. Michel Stockvis from our key partner, our strategic partner, Randstad, um, and he is going to talk about navigating without an autopilot. Okay. <laughs> welcome. Thank you very much, and um, I definitely need to concur. It's uh, great to see you all uh, being here this early in the morning. Um, as the title highlights, uh, I try to make a, co a correlation or a comparison with the airline, the, the, the planes we typically fly in. Nobody today can imagine anymore that we fly in a plane uh, knowing that there is no navigation, no instruments in the cockpit. This is something we just cannot believe anymore. Um, and hopefully throughout this session, you will really start to understand that, to a certain degree, that also very much applies to talent, to HR, to the attraction and engagement of, uh, of, of key resources in our organizations. So before we start, as the captain of the plane here, um, we have two exits in the back and two exits here in the front. Uh, I if, again, if I was a, a pilot, I probably would be juggling a little bit with load balancing, since we seem to have a lot of people on that side and less on that side. Um, so please close your, uh, uh, seat, your, your, your seat belts and then hopefully we have a safe flight. So um, thank you very much for that. As I mentioned, I think this picture uh, we all know. This is a typical cockpit of an airplane that we take for business trips, for personal trips. Um, and if you look to the amount of instruments, uh, it is something that we believe is a standard. Uh, it is a standard to bring us from A to B on time, safe, um, and, and, and pretty much in, in the way we expect it. This is a picture we just cannot imagine anymore. This is not how we would feel comfortable. Maybe some of us do who enjoy uh, private flights in, in small planes like this, but typically people do not expect this kind of cockpit uh, and instruments to bring us from A to B in a safe way. So translating this to talent and to HR, um, there are so many organizations that to a certain degree still operate in this way. They know they have a existing footprint in, 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 in people, in talent. They know roughly how much they want to grow. They know roughly how much their staff turnover is. Uh, yet again, that's most of the cases where it ends. I can tell you, and hopefully throughout the next 20, 25 minutes, that you all walk away with a belief that this is just not sufficient. It is not sufficient for two reasons. One is the people that you're trying to recruit don't accept this anymore. People are not uh, uh, there because you want them only and you are the only one who wants to hire them. People have a choice to it today. Um, and again, there is data and I will show some of this to you in a minute as well. Um, so that, that's one. And at the second time, there is also a tremendous uh, development in the whole technology space. There are so many applications, so many pieces of functionality that enable you to really do a superb job on attracting and retaining and engaging with talent within our organizations and even with talent outside the organizations. That it becomes a necessity for you all to embrace it and to incorporate this in your HR strategies going forward. Winning the war for talent. I think this is a theme that we have seen and we've heard for many, many, many years. Um, there was an attempt to really try to beat and outsmart our competitors. We need to be quicker at job boards. We need to be faster. We need to have sexy stories to tell. 
that was the, the, the pitch we all brought to market for many, many years. I personally believe that uh, this is absolutely not applicable anymore. In, in fact, if you want to talk about the war for talent, I think we probably can safely say that we've lost. We cannot fight with competition for talent out there in the market. We need to embrace different approaches and different strategies. If you look to talent, if you look to especially the younger generations that are currently entering into the labor markets, in pretty much all of the geographies around the world, um, then there are a few things that are really uh, important to notice. Um, there are many more new models for engagement uh, uh, on, on the market. So lifetime employment, as, as I put on the slide here, is becoming a dinosaur. No longer are people looking for a lifetime employment, partially because this is what we as organizations um, uh, created, we caused it by going in through massive layoffs, we more or less have broken uh, the rhythm of lifetime employment. The people don't, do, don't expect any more lifetime employment. In fact, if you look around the globe, the average tenure nowadays is less than four years. So people that are joining your organization today know that they will be leaving on average within four years. Um, another one is freelance or uberization or gig workers. Uh, 1099s. I mean, they have different, many different names, but in essence, it's a very rapidly growing part of the work, workforce that has chosen themselves to work in a, in a freelance mode. They become their own company. They become master of their own destiny. And if you as an organization are able to give them interesting opportunities, uh, an interesting environment to work in and, and, and have interesting peers to work with, then these people will select you instead of the other way around. So freelancers is definitely one of the big trends that we see, and many organizations today struggle with handling freelancers, let even alone that they are able to attract freelancers. So technologies like, like freelance marketplaces, where you can use your own employer branding to attract local uh, 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 freelancers for specific jobs is, is one of the uh, fastest growing technology streams. So freelancers is a key one. Um, instant feedback, and that is very much again linked to the younger generations that today enter into the labor market. People do not expect to get a re performance review, no, people expect to give a performance review to their manager, which is very different to what we've seen and what we're used to within our organizations. People think that if they are in a job for six, seven months that they are already extremely loyal. Many things that we thought were written in stone in the last 10, 20 years have completely shifted upside down. I've seen our organizations and I had the pleasure to work with companies like Google to implement their global uh, contingent strategy and their recruitment strategy. They are applying even things like instant feedback, so pulse feedback. So like in some cases we've probably seen it after a check-in at the air airport uh, or when we go to a public uh, toilet. We can push on those smileys with green, orange, red. This is what they do constantly within their organization on and many different touch points, really trying to collect the feedback of the workers of the population on that specific uh, uh, piece of the workflow or activity. This allows them to really monitor real time where they need to change, where they need to foster, where they need to upgrade certain activities in order to really create an end to end engagement for all of their employees. Again, bringing it a little bit closer to technology. I mean, some people really try to follow what's going on, but at the same time, it, if you look to the data, to the numbers, it becomes so big. Every minute of a day, more than 50,000 apps are downloaded from the, the iTunes store for, for, from Apple. More than 50,000 apps per minute. A number of years ago, 99% of these apps were games, were things that people can use in their personal life. Nowadays, many of these apps are business related. And over the last two, three years, we've seen a rapid growth of company specific apps that they develop and allow their employees to use to share. Uh, and again, this could be to digitalize and personalize your uh, benefits package. This could be to create communication upwards within the organization 
So they are combining tools that the younger generations especially expect. For them, it's like bread, bread and butter. Uh, and really weaving this into HR processes and HR principles. Um, Facebook, more than 4 million pages are liked uh, per minute. It's, it's things that we really need to understand how this applies also to talent, to recruitment and to engagement with our employees. I still from time to time see companies that don't de deploy the social media in the world of talent and in the world of talent attraction. So please keep this in mind, social media is here to stay and social media has been here already for a long time and it is really time for all of us to step up this, this train and really develop our own unique uh, engagement platforms. Mobile, and it's interesting, this is a re relatively recent statistic to look at the usage of mobile as a source to search for jobs. So this is not a mobile where you go to the browser and then go to a company site. No, this is really mobile applications where you, that, that are used to apply for a job. And it's interesting to see that if you look to the countries with the adoption that Poland as a country is bottom of the list compared to uh, uh, pretty much more Asia-Pacific countries where you see a huge adoption. It does not mean that there are less mobiles in Poland. No, for sure not. But what it means is that there's only a few companies that are starting to identify how you can use mobile and mobile applications to bring them into your talent attraction uh, uh, process. Again, this is definitely one of the, the, the big ticket items that we see. Um, mobile is not a platform. Mobile is the platform. If you do not have a mobile attraction approach, you will lose against competition. So definitely this is one of the key ones as well. HR technology. Um, the last few years this is really exploding. Uh, and again, you probably have all seen and do see articles, uh, uh, publications, blogs. Um, again, this is here to stay. And at the same time, this is just at the beginning, beginning of, of a fast uh, uh, growth. It's interesting to look at some of the key rationale. So why is it becoming such a hot topic? Um, I think the biggest driver because behind all of this is the fact that if you look to the whole IT landscape, many more applications nowadays are in the cloud, as they call it, um, are SaaS-based, which means you don't need to buy a license and then go through a horrible implementation cycle uh, with 70% likelihood that you are uh, late in delivery, above budget, or never even finish. Now, today's technology landscapes allow to easily configure, plug and play, and connect through, through the cloud. So technology is definitely easier to leverage, hence that's one of the reasons why we do see a big growth. At the same time, there's also more standardization of protocols, so you are more AC now and able to connect certain pieces of technology and work with those pieces of technology in conjunction. Again, many years ago, that was just not possible. You had an isolated HRMS system where you used your core HR data, uh, and that pretty much was it. And everything else you had to do in isolation, and there was no connectivity between those platforms. If you look to the core HR systems, typically the Oracle, PeopleSoft, SAP, uh, Workday, what we see is that one of the, the fastest growing platforms, Workday, uh, is growing because they are able to integrate and they are leveraging the cloud and SaaS platforms. So many organizations are shifting and moving away from the traditional HRMS systems to, 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 for instance, Workday, again, one of the fastest growing platforms today. At the same time, we see other areas growing. So uh, applications around recruitment, training, uh, learning and development, uh, uh, collaboration, uh, appraisal platforms, again, all connected so that you are, you are able to track and trace also the data flows behind all of them. And again, these are the big drivers behind what we call big data. Talent analytics, again, big data. Um, we are more able now than we were a few years ago to not only understand why things happened in the past, but also what will happen in the near future. So moving away from basic reporting to predictive analytics to simulations to really understand from a workforce planning perspective what happens if we grow with so much percent, how much do we think the retention will be impacted? What does that mean from a recruitment process? 
how much talent attraction uh, activities do we need to engage and how successful are they going to be most likely? What job boards do we need to deploy? What's going to be the effectiveness of a euro invested in a certain activity? All of these questions are examples that can be answered and, and can be supported with, with data. Retention analytics, another interesting one. Knowing that people are going to, on average, stay no longer any more than four years, and that's probably even going to reduce over time, it is still vital to better understand retention. Today there are technologies out there that can monitor real-time your people's retention uh, likelihood. There's a platform called uh, Joborate. Um, and what they do, they, uh, uh, they create an index score on an individual, what they call the J-index. And they monitor real-time individuals' behavior on all social media. It's a little bit big brother is watching you. Um, but through the social media behavior and activities that I as an individual perform on social media, they can follow and predict the likelihood of me stepping out of my current role or leaving my existing company. Um, the most simple example probably here is um, LinkedIn. The moment I start to update my picture on LinkedIn, it is probably a pretty okay and safe um, indicator that I might do this for a reason. And the reason might be that I expect other people to look at my LinkedIn profile for maybe recruitment purposes. This is a very simplistic example, um, but they created the very sophisticated algorithms to really monitor Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, uh, LinkedIn and translate it in a real-time score, a J-index score, on each individual uh, within your organization. So this is an example of technology really used to track and trace retention uh, for your workforce. So again, if I summarize the key trends from a technology perspective, I think I mentioned already one or two, so mobile is everything. It's not the platform, it is the platform, not a platform. HR, HRMS, um, used to be kind of a process and systems around system of records. This is the place where we track and trace all the key HR data. I think we are definitely moving away from a system of record to a system of engagement. Individuals, people nowadays expect to be engaged, whether it is as a perm employee or whether it is as, an, as a candidate through the, the uh, candidate experience in the recruitment cycle. Um, sensing, crowdsourcing, Internet of Things, I've seen great examples with the Internet of Things. Um, if you look at, for instance, the movie Back to the Future, um, I think many of us probably have seen it, stuff then was really identified as, wow, I mean, that would be weird if we have it. If you go back to the movie, 90% of that stuff is here today. The Apple Watch, uh, the iPhone, um, we have weird rollerblades and, and, and segways that we use nowadays. Stuff, again, that was in that movie already being, being de deployed. But there are companies now, and Fujitsu is a great example, they have developed uh, really smart uh, employee badges, not just to enter and leave a building, uh, but also to really track and trace the interaction between uh, functional groups. So how much is HR interacting with IT? Uh, how much, and where do, it, where do they do it in the building? How much are engineering folks interacting with salespeople? Um, and trying to correlate that against the business performance. So there are really a lot of Internet of Things applications already entering into the, uh, the, the, the business world as well. Uh, so keep that in mind. Video social, video interviewing, uh, using social platforms. Again, these are, I would say today, nowadays, and the next few years, these are, these are going to be more, more the standards. Um, the talent experience. I've seen, and I quite often still see organizations that if I do a kind of uh, um, and tr try to follow the experience of a candidate when they enter into a recruitment uh, activity with an organization, how much they are missing the trick. They have great websites, they have great stories to tell, but the moment you enter into the building, you are brought to the dungeon for an interview. You are not even getting a nice cup of coffee. What happens with those people? They go straight back out in the office, they first start to go on Glassdoor and give horrible scores on you as an employer. That is shared with hundreds of their friends in Facebook and other social media. Before you know, you have infected potentially thousand plus candidates that could have been within your organization. So that experience just in that, in that, in that candidate interview stage is already becoming vital. That is a way your advertising board to the labor market. 
So again, take a, take a step back and think about you as an HR decision maker for your organization. With all of this happening, it's not going to be easier. You now all of a sudden have a significant IT digital agenda to drive uh, more than you used to be used to have to do in the past. One approach that I sometimes use for organizations to really help them understand where they are and what they should do to help improve and create a kind of an end-to-end -end experience is to think about models like I show here on the slide. So from one side, from an organizational perspective, but also from a candidate perspective, really try to go through the different steps and the dif different touch points and think about how you are organizing yourself and how you are using technology to create the desired experience. I think there are tremendous opportunities. And still in the middle, you have your core HR, your ATS systems, your VMS systems, or your CRM systems. Also CRM, I just mentioned, this is definitely one of the big growth areas. In the old, wor old world, we had application tracking systems. Um, nowadays, with the CRM, we can really use marketing uh, methods, marketing strategies to, re to better engage and target. So social recruiting, search engine optimization, uh, campaigns around diversity, um, referrals. Uh, there are all platforms that can be integrated and used to really create a best-in-class experience on many of these areas. To give a few examples on, on CRM, so these are tools like a Smashfly, Averture, etc. Uh, great People is another great platform. It really helps you to bring your company's brand, your employer brand, and create a true end-to-end uh, experience for your candidates. Um, until the moment that candidates really want to apply and then they move automati automatically into your ATS platform. Uh, so things like the offer acceptance management, uh, things like the uh, segmentation, content creation, uh, uh, unique landing pages, all of these elements you can create within a CRM platform. So nowadays I see many, many more organizations, thank God, that are investing and deploying these, uh, these pieces of technology. At the same time, that's the devil's dilemma a little bit. If you want to understand, so where do I need to put my dollars, there is a lot of choice. Um, this is just a summary. This is just a small list. I could probably create three times as much names, but then it's not readable anymore. From a sourcing, engaging, hiring perspective, uh, from a candidate employer perspective, there are so many choices to make. So to simplify it a little bit, uh, you may be able to cluster them into the purpose of the platforms. So if you look to all of these bubbles, you probably, and that's not just even a one-size-fits-all, but this might be something you do temporarily or uh, periodically, um, you want probably to create your own Olympic rings out of, out of this landscape uh, to, really, to really drive the value. Big data, I mentioned it, so starting from data, reporting, growing all the way up into the statistics analysis, predictive analysis, simulations, and really trying to optimize and, and, and be ahead of the curve. This is, this is one of the biggest investment areas. And then if you look to some of the providers, then there are a large growing area of, of companies that, that work on the predictive side, uh, the descriptive side, uh, but also the an analytics part. So IBM is clearly one of the, 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 the global leaders here. But there are many more platforms that you can leverage. To summarize this piece, um, I think as HR, um, there is an urgent need to really um, create an additional chapter in your HR strategy. Uh, it's a chapter that I would call SMAC. It is really addressing social, mobile, analytics, and cloud from a technology perspective. This SMAC chapter is going to determine the degree of success you will have on the, the labor markets. By doing so, you will definitely be able to uh, better attract and engage and retain talent, at least compared to your organization, say your com competing uh, employees in your areas. At the same time, and again, this is a picture with a lot of a lot of logos. Uh, so really try to understand uh, the complexity. And if if I look to the surveys that we do frequently, um, almost three thirds of the interviewed people uh, have a challenge here. They know that they need to do stuff, um, but it's one of the biggest challenges they have to overcome. This slide shows you just the amount of dollars that are invested in HR technology startups. Um, so just in the last quarter of 2015, 91 
deals were made. HR technology companies that were acquired were going through additional investing rounds. Uh, so this is a rapidly growing area. What do we do as Ronstadt, since we also face the same challenge? We created the Ronstadt Investment Fund, which is a few experts. Uh, Paul Schreckan was here yesterday as well, um, who are really in touch with all of these organizations. So every year they play, break, assess more than 250 of these pieces of technology to really I try to understand and identify what's new. This brings them into the heart of, of innovation, of disruptive HR technology. So some examples of the technologies that we as Ronstadt part participate in our own. Um, companies like Rysmart, so that's completely digitalization of the outplacement process. Uh, so no longer traditional models, but really digital. Twago is the European uh, leader for uh, freelancers. Uh, Rollpoint, uh, referral checking, uh, uh, sorry, this checks, the Rollpoint is, is, is uh, re-referrals. Uh, Checkster is the back background checking part. Pymetrics, it's, it's a gamification-based assessment platform. Bringing all of these comp technologies together is, is one of the key, the key drivers. With that, I want to bring it back to the airplane. This is a picture not into the future. This is a picture where we are pretty close. These are the designs of the new Boeings and Airbuses. So you see less uh, meters, you see more screens. And what I found interesting, you do have, instead of a small window in front, you do have a 180 degree view. Um, so it still allows the pilots in such a plane to have a better look around on what's really happening close around them as well. With that, I hope I've given you a few things to think, uh, th thoughts to think about. Um, at the same time, if you go to our corporate website, you will find um, a link where you can download a 100-page talent trend report. Uh, this is one of the annual studies, and um, I'm sure you will find way more details on any of the topics being discussed. I thank you very much for your time and attention. Uh, thank you. <laughs>